live at <laughs> o'clock. This is the WOPN Top 5. And welcome to the OpenSource.com Top 5. The weekly Top 5. Let's get started, shall we? Oh, I'm Jason Van Gumster, in case you didn't know. And, all right, so starting at number 5, we have how to turn a Raspberry Pi into an ebook server. Reporting in the field, we have Ben Cotton. That's right, Jason. Community moderator Don Watkins tells us how to make digital books available. The Caliber ebook management software makes it easy to set up an ebook server on a Raspberry Pi 3, even in low connectivity areas like this jungle that is totally not my backyard. Thanks, Ben. And now for the number four story, we have an introduction to creating documents in LaTeX. Let's go back to Ben. I've been speaking to Aaron Cocker about this. He's a student studying computing and tells us that LaTeX is a powerful language for document layouts. This is an introductory article and we'll provide updates as we learn more. Well, thank you, Ben. And Ben, how about you tell us about the next one? The story was, are you a Python coder? Jason, over 1,500 people have voted in this article so far. Over half of voters say they program in Python all the time. Exit poll suggests that this result will hold, but officials are not yet willing to state a winner on the record. Thanks a lot, Ben. Also, reporting about the weather is our reporter, Ben Cotton. He'll be telling us about some strange weather coming about. The OpenSource.com weather service has issued a giveaway warning until Sunday, July 2nd at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We've heard reports that it's raining laptops. Some lucky winner will receive a System76 Gazelle laptop. Viewers are encouraged to stay inside and not use the free entry form in order to improve my chances. Thank you for that report, Ben. Now for our number two story. Three mistakes to avoid when learning how to code Python. Ben, I think you know what to do. I'm here on the scene of some serious Python errors that Pete Savage has made. First responders say it may take hours to clean up. Savage says he would like viewers to learn from his mistakes. Thanks a lot, Ben. And now we have our number one story, which is when not to use a JavaScript framework. Ben, how about you tell us about that? JavaScript powers many of the most popular websites, and a lot of developers use frameworks to simplify the development process. But what they don't know can kill you. Or not. But Todd Hansman explains why frameworks aren't always a good choice. Now back to Jason in the studio. And thank you for that last story, Ben. That's about it for this week. Signing off, I'm Jason Van Gumster for OpenSource.com, where I don't have to tell you I'm wearing pants. How about I don't have to tell you if I'm wearing pants? I don't have to tell you that either. <laughs>